Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Maple Goldmine stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Maple Gold Mines is an exploration company focused on its sole mineral property, the Douay Gold Project in Quebec. The company is headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada and was founded in 2010. It went public in 2012 and currently trades on the TSX Venture and the Pink Sheets. Currently there is a 46 person exploration camp on the Douay property with drilling, sawing, sampling, storage and office facilities. The Douay project is held by a 50-50 joint venture between Maple Gold and Agnico. Agnico will provide a total of $18 million of funding over four years. The Douay is the third largest undeveloped gold resource in Quebec. Maple Gold has a number of drill campaigns planned at Douay, with all their projects fully funded to the end of the year. Douay has between 400,000 and 2.4 million ounces of gold. During the gold rush, people could pan for gold by using a pan to catch gold in a stream. Gold mining is a lot more complex in current times. Experts use expensive machinery to mine gold. Geologists first examine the mines for gold deposits. The mine is blasted, as you can see in this picture below. Iron ore is gathered into trucks to be processed for gold. A lot of the gold cannot be seen by the naked eye that's why they have to transport so much iron ore to be sifted through by machinery to find out what's gold and what's not. Some iron ore has more gold deposits than others. Certain gold deposits are of higher grade. The recovered gold is melted and turned into gold bars. As you can see, this is a very time consuming and expensive process. It's not just money and time, you need a lot of experts who understand what they're doing. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 85 million market cap, they're trading at 27 cents a share and they have 321 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow each year because they're pre-revenue. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative each year. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit which of course is negative each year. Then below that is operating expenses, then operating income. Below is their interest income and expenses. They received about $190,000 from interest on their investments. They paid $133,000 of interest on their debt, which is lower than 2019 of $321,000. Then below that is other income and expenses, and the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which is negative every year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. Since they have negative free cash flow, they need money from somewhere to run their business. They issued 6 million of capital stock in 2018 and 3.7 million in 2019. They also issued some debt in 2019, but it looks like they paid down most of that debt in the trailing 12 months. Let's look at the capital structure. 5.5 million of equity, 300,000 of debt. Their 95% equity, 5% debt, and their net debt is negative 6 million. So they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $6 million of cash left over. Their WAC is 8.7%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. 
We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 221 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $158 million. We divide that by 321 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 49 cents. So they're trading at 27 cents. So they're trading at a 46% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. It's really hard to value a company that has negative free cash flow. Also, there weren't any analyst estimates out there to try to back into their numbers. The way I valued this company, I assumed the mine would generate 1 million ounces of gold for the shareholders. An ounce of gold costs $1,700. That's equivalent to $1.7 billion of gold. I took the average free cash flow margin for a bunch of gold companies. I took their total free cash flows over revenue, and it came out to 24%. 24% times 1.7 billion is 401 million. I spread that 401 million over 30 years. That's 13.4 million a year. I assume 13.4 million of free cash flow in 2024. So you can see after a few months, the stock was driven way up there. Then it came back down and it looks like it shot up a couple months ago to about 50 cents, but it's come back down. It's still trending a lot higher than it was a few months ago. When you invest in a company with pre-revenue, you're looking towards the future. The closer they get to producing gold from their mines, the higher their stock will go. This stock trades well below people's radars because it's trading on the pink sheets and the TSX Venture. Those are not major stock exchanges. They have a really low beta, 0.25, so the stock moves one quarter of the market. The stock has gone up 308% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 51%. The 52 week low was 6 cents, the high was 56 cents. The stock is trading above its 50 day but below its 200 day moving average. About 300,000 shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 321 million shares outstanding, 279 million are on float, 11.5% are held by institutions, and almost none of the shares are shorted. In the past year, this stock went up 341% while the industry went up 51% and the market went up 57%. While the gold industry went up 51% and the market went up 57%. In the past five years, the stock has done really well, up 562%, much better than its industry and the market. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you'd be at $9,300 today. Agnico is the biggest shareholder at a little over 12%. Then FMR, the last person on this list is a CEO, owning 0.38%. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 32, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. They don't have any sales, so we can't look at the price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 15.5. So investors are paying $15.50 for $1 book value. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity, negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They can cover their current liabilities about five times and their current assets are mainly cash of 6.2 million. The company should have enough funding to get through the next 12 months without needing more debt or equity. They had negative $3 million of free cash flow, $5 million of working capital, so they have $2 million of funding. Plus, Agnico is backstopping them for a lot of their expenses. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 12 companies in the industry gold, and Maple is right here. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse than all the price multiples. They do have a high current ratio. They have a bad ROE. They are lower in debt than the average. And they're a lot smaller than average. And of course, they cannot afford to pay a dividend. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 46% discount. This company has a great asset. It's a mine with a lot of gold in it. It just takes a lot of time and money to get that gold out of that mine. 
So I think it could be a good long-term play. You just might have to wait a few years. I ranked their free cash flow 1 out of 10, their revenue 1 out of 10, and their ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.